Now, in some of my recent videos, people have complained about me giving away spoilers for the upcoming race in the intro. So, uh, in the interest of those people, I'll address this right away. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, I'm not going to show any clips in the actual race, but um, here's a visual representation, a metaphor, if you will, as to how the Pocono race went. Located in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania, Pocono Raceway is sometimes called the Tricky Triangle due to its unique three-turn layout. Shitty triangle, more like. The makes the setup of the car and the cruise ability to make chassis adjustments absolutely crucial here. Ha! That thing Often I can't do. Between a winning performance and a poor performance. Yeah, which one do you think ours was today? <laughs> anyway. Hello, race fans, and welcome back to Bomber Sports Plays NASCAR Heat Evolution. I've, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyone hoping for a recovery after Charlotte? Mmm. That's, yeah. That's. Pocono. I wasn't really sure what to expect going into Pocono, and, yeah, what we're probably about to get is perhaps the worst race of the season so far, but it was an entertaining kind. I mean, at the time, it was frustrating as balls, but now, let's see if we can laugh our way through it together. Anyway, we're underway. In the Axolta, so we paint winners 400, so they're not painting our car anytime soon. And we're on the outside, going through turn one. This is a bit of a cluster molest, um, or a cluster fruitcake even. Up behind Danica Patrick is uh, making Ricky Stenhouse very jealous. So let's go on the outside of Danica Patrick instead. Let's try and not touch Danica Patrick. That'll be oh oh god no. Well, well that's exactly what we've done. Got distracted there. I'm sorry, sorry Rick. I'm sorry, Danica, as well. It's x Mac D. He's buried back in the mediocrity train with us back here. Both the front row cars are as well. That's exactly what Chris Buescher deserves. Although he should be doing a bit better here. Maybe he's just lurking. It's just like, um, one of those small clouds in the sky could turn into a rain cloud, I guess. Or just descend onto the track and fog it out. We're three wide down the front stretch. Uh, we're actually getting a run on some cars. That's surprising in itself. Uh, what? Um, my oh, for fuck's sake, what? Oh, <laughs> now, here's the test of the new caution system. Is that a caution? Bearing in mind this is after the patch, which said it was fixing caution detection. And David Hoos is still blind. Well done. Really fixed that one. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this race is under a great start, isn't it? We've nearly been wrecked into turn one by Michael Annette for no reason. And they've not thrown a caution, so presumably Michael Annette's just sat in the middle of the track like, um... Guys, really? He's like me last race. Just like, Fuh! Anyway. At least this race won't be as long as Charlotte, so it won't be as much of a drag. I mean, this is only 400... Oh, crying out loud. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Hello, David Reagan. You've taken an interest. You've been like, oh, this guy's actually terrible. Why is he ahead of me? In fact, so has everyone. Hey, Danica. Um, yeah, at least this race is not going to be as much of a slog as Charlotte, because it's not going to be quite as long. Uh, it's 40 laps, because, uh, of course, the, the, the real race is 400 miles, so this is, uh, what, uh, 80... 100? It's 100 miles. Uh, hi, Brad. Hi. Oh, get this one out of the way early. Halloween! Did we even do that, Charlotte? Was it just such a, a clusterfuck that we just didn't even do that? Anyway, let's do it twice. Halloween! <coughs> oh, God, it ruins my voice. <coughs> oh, dearie me, I need a sip of tea. Oh, Hot tea as well. Oh, jeez. Caution, contents might be hot. Hmm. Turns out I'm one of those people. Oh, it's Brian Scott, the most blisteringly mediocre NASCAR driver in the world. And no, not one second place finish at Talladega will affect that. Although I do remember when, briefly in the Xfinity series, he decided to be that guy who was like, I'm going to beat Carl Busch. And then Carl Busch nearly wrecked him at 200 miles an hour and was like, yeah, nah. Yeah, this is just not going to happen, mate. For, for all for about 10 laps in one Xfinity race. I think it was one of those races at the brick. Why can no one do turn one? What, why is turn one such... Can we just not? Who is just parking the bus right now? Is it Clint Boyer? Boyer, can you just, can you just stop being mediocre? I know you have worse engines than us, and that's saying something. But, yeah, I mean, this is... I mean, Pocono, I never... I was... Oh, hi, Austin! Oh, my. I love how I just go from having some small amount of grip to none at all. Oh, hi, David. David, what are you doing? David, you absolute plank. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, wait, time out. Time out. So, Michael and it spinning into the wall in turn one it was not a caution. Me lightly door slamming with David Reagan. Yeah, that's a caution. Put it out, lads. Put it out. Put it out. Get the safety car out. Scramble it now. Scramble, scramble. Safety car boards and flags. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've improved the caution detection. Uh, we're pitting here because we may as well. We're still in the back. Uh, basically, the story of this race was, I mean, unlike Charlotte, like, Charlotte, I was doing well and we were on for a good finish until the, uh, the screw job from race control. This, I mean, oh, we're good on restarts. Well, up until about now. No, we're still, actually, no, we're still doing well. Still doing well, still doing well. Can we close it to get... Oh, no, we just lose gas, and now... Oh, Chase Elliott squeezing us down. We're not... We're, gonna, we're just going to cause such a wreck into turn one, aren't we? Oh, t t hi, Carl! Oh, for crying out loud! Cheers! Thanks! Oh, and... Oh, will we get the caution? I think David Hoos has heard us bitching, and he's like, All right, fine, jeez, have your caution, then. Let me stop being so rubbish. Although I will not say, that was not my fault. I would like to point out that really was not my fault. That was Carl Edwards being a sped. Although it seems to be, like, this race is a few of the other niggles I have with this game, I think, manifesting. Like, one of them, the AI on restarts, man. If you're on the inside on a restart at some tracks, we saw this at Dover, they will just cut you the fuck off. And it doesn't matter if you're about to cause a wreck. Oh, hello, Joey Logano. What are all these good cars doing back here? Do they pull, like, a bit of fuel strategy shenanigans? I mean, so far, I've just been like, hey, I may as well pit, and we'll get to wine a bit. Um, I'm a natural poet today. I, I just noticed that. I'm dropping some rhymes up in here. I'm dropping some... Um, I'm spitting some fierce bars. Uh, anyway. Joey? Jo Joey, where are you? Oh, we're squeezing through. Oh, hi, Michael Annette. You were the first... Oh, it's both the guys who wrecked me on restarts. Which one do I wreck first? Which one do I get payback on first? Hey, Michael Annette. You're more blisteringly mediocre, so I'm going to fuck your world up. Or try to, at least. Oh, God. Wow, we're rubbish. <laughs> I love the fact that we're trying to go around the high side. We're like, yeah, we're passing a load of cars, and then more people pass on the inside. It's like, oh, we've actually made no positions up. And we can't go to the inside because it's just an absolute trainer lane. Yeah, Joey, you may as well go through, mate. We're battling for 39th place, which I know for you is a massive disappointment. For me, I've kind of accepted my fate for this race. See, I mean, there's the issue of Pocono like being really, really like long straights, obviously. Although we don't seem to be suffering that badly in a straight line. It's in the turns. And here's the thing that I really noticed in this race, and I don't... Mike, can you just stop being average? Can you just stop being a blistering non-entity? He's competing with Brian Scott for that honor right now. Look at it. It's the WWE World Blistering Non-Entity Heavyweight Championship of the World. And it's fought, set for one fall. And it is between Michael Annette and Brian Scott in a, um, no, I don't know, no DQ, fails count anywhere, I don't know. Anyway, I've got completely off tangent and I have a slightly burnt tongue for my cup of tea. So, it's, a, a lot of things are happening right now. It's very, very stressed, I'm very stressed right now. Are we going to go four wide? Are we going to go four wide? We're going to go four, no we're not. <laughs> and Matt Kenseth was like, nope, no we're not. So we're just back here in the mediocrity bin, just of just just averageness all over the place. With some surprisingly good cars in here as well, like Matt Kenz is like, um, what what are you what? Like, you know what, guys just pass me. I'm still lo oh god. And now everyone's just tanking because Eric Jones has got a nosebleed and he's like, what the hell am I doing not in last? Oh jeez. I mean oh god. I mean, actually to be fair, like when I recorded this race, I was just a heap of rage. But Commentating on it, doing the commentary now, it's actually quite fun. Like, some of the racing's pretty fun. But it's, oh god. And then we get to a turn and it just goes straight to hell. Because what this race really demonstrates, oh, cheers Martin. Thanks, that's really gonna help me handling my car. You squeezing me into the wall. You blithering, just, oh, hey look, it's the, we should probably be in contention for the championship because we've won a load of races, but lol the chase, we're not, crew. So yeah, Truex, I understand that you're, you're heated about that, mate, but don't take that out on me, all right? All right? Yeah? You see? I'm, I'm going to bump draft you a bit more. Yeah. 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 You get wrecked, son. Anyway. Now, speaking of which, it's Regan Smith up in front. We've practically made a truce. Like, I'm on the verge of, like, phoning him up, like, yo, Regan, do you want to go for a beer sometime, mate? Like, we're, we're on that level now. We're chill. We're, we're pretty cool, but uh, a lot can change in a very short space of time in racing, and it probably will. So, hi, Regan Smith. Do you want to resume the feud, or do you want to remain peaceful? Well, he's just going to defend his position. 
Oh, and I'm nearly gonna crash. Oh, I'm just gonna crash because my car is a horrendous shit heap of. Oh God. Up the inside. Let's try and look for the. Let's try and pass on the inside. Ha! This is gonna be fun. With a car that does not turn, but is turning just about enough to make the pass. There we go. That'll do. <clears throat> but yeah, this race, man. I've said a few times in this series that I've had bad handling cars, like really bad cars, like Bristol. I think a Fontana, my car was absolute trash. But what's annoying at this race, and I've had this a few times now, I don't know if it's just me being rubbish with setups, but I'm convinced it's not. Like, I'll go through, like, setup guides and be like, oh, this changes that setting, and this makes the car handle, it makes it loose off the corner, does this, that, and the other. Like, in single race and in championship season, that's, like, it works, and you're like, oh, I've adjusted on the wedge. Ah, uh, huh, that's made the car tighter, as I expected it would. But, like... In career mode, and I don't know if anyone else has- Oh my god, just look at- look at it! Just like, just fucking off to Narnia every time we get to the tunnel turn. I mean, yeah, you do have to try and adjust for three different corners here at Pocono. My car is just three varying levels of shit in every corner. But like, for this race, I even went and found a custom setup online and was like, Oh, it's, it's really comfortable and really- Oh, hello, Bane. Quite literally- <laughs> Thanks to Oh, for God's sake! Why? Oh god, and now I'm getting plowed by Eric Amarola. I just can't help being mediocre. Stop discriminating! Jesus Christ, everything about this race is just one fail after another. Oh, God, no. I'm not gonna go on a full rant again like at Charlotte, because at least David Hoots hasn't screwed us yet. But yeah, like, I don't know if it's just me, but like, every time I try and make adjustments to my career car, it just makes it worse, like, even when it shouldn't. I'll like make a slight adjustment to be like, huh, this should tight this should loosen the car off the corner. And it's just like, Lel, it's just like, honestly, it gets to a point, like with the custom setup I applied for Pocono, I put it on my cup car, and it was literally like, hmm, there's a corner coming up now. I'm going to think about turning this down, and we've crashed spun into the wall. Like, genuinely. Like, I will show you. Oh, hi, Matt Kenseth. Are you gonna try and wreck me for 26th place? Yeah, you are, aren't you? Because, yeah, I praise the AI for battling hard, but at this point in time, I'm just like, can you just people just leave me alone now? Oh, let's try and drive past a couple of cars. <laughs> Except we get out in clean air and we have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. And now we're on the inside for turn one. They're not going to give me any space, are they? And it's sort of worked. It, it would have worked had Clint Boyer not been there. And I've lost all those positions again. And oh, God, make it stop. Oh, Joey Logano's here as well. Oh, oh no. But yeah, like... Literally, coming up to a corner, my setup would be like, okay, I'm gonna think about turning, and I'm 45 degrees sideways and I'm in the wall. Like, literally, 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 I'm not joking. Oh, God, and then straight. Oh. And we slap the inside wall. Jesus Christ, this car is on pissing, drivable. Like, I get having a bad career mode car, and I've praised it. I've praised that dynamic of having a really, really shite car in career mode to start off with. Like, it, it makes you appreciate what you have, do you know what I mean? But this, like, what I don't get is how, like, the- I'm just gonna pit. It's near my fuel window anyway, and do you know what? Bollocks to it. I, oh, <laughs> oh god, and now we've got a penalty. I don't- I don't- Dale- get fucked, Dale Jr. Get fucked, AJ. Stop trying to pull out in front of me, you pricks. Uh, <laughs> just, just flipping everyone off down pit road. This is like that gif of Mr. Bean. Just driving past, flipping everyone off. That's me right now. I'm just, I'm flipping off David Hoots. I and mean, Sebastian Vettel, like, yeah, you thought that was rage right now. You ain't seen nothing yet, pal. We're on like a Greg Murphy level. 34 set. Is that including the penalty? That better include the penalty. That'd not just be for like, I don't know, me getting out and doing a Greg Murphy in 2002 and actually going to have a shit. <laughs> that was during the famous race. If, if none of you heard the story, Greg Murphy at the Bathurst 1000, 2002, I want to say. Um, got a penalty for a fire in pit lane that wasn't even his fault technically, it was his crew. He got a five minute stop and go penalty, which basically is like two and a half laps of Bathurst, so his race was over. And when he came into the pits, he just got out of the car, stormed into the garage, swore at all of his crew, and then just stormed into a portaloo and just had a shit. He just had a rage crap, and then just got, just was just like, it was just like, a flush, you know, wash your hands. Just came back out, stormed back to his car and drove off. Oh, hey! D hang on! Is David Hoots trying to redress previous injustices? We've literally just pitted and gone a lap down, and he's thrown a caution for, uh, reasons. Reasons, that'd be it. So, huh, huh, what about that? 
he may have actually given us a break there. So we'll get away with round, at least be back on the lead lap. Which is good, because then it will avoid all that nonsense with rubber banding. But yeah, man. The setup for these cars, like, the default setups are either quite good or really, really bad. Like, at Fontana, it was wrecking loose into the corners. And then, like, and it's quite possible that in trying to rectify that, it was making the car really, really bad tight off. Like, here, it's just, oh, God, it's just from the middle of the corner off. And this is, oh, God, no one's going anywhere. Does, does anyone want to, like, accelerate right now? You know, it's that pedal. It's that pedal down in front of you. You just press that down. And then that funny stick next to you. Change, put that up. And then round in a sort of H pattern. And, oh, God, they're still not going anywhere. They're still not going anywhere. We're back in the mediocrity train, folks. But yeah, like, I don't know if it's just me and if, like, if any of you got, like, setup advice for career mode, put it in the comments below, because as I say, it doesn't seem to have much, like, adjustments you make in single player or championship do completely different things in career mode. It's like, a slight wedge adjustment might loosen your car up a little bit in single race, and then you'll do the same adjustment in career mode on the same setup, and it'll just be like, wrecking loose into every corner like you can't turn the steering wheel without spinning out and wrecking like I'm sorry not even even Ken Block would be like seriously what is this shit and I drive cars permanently sideways like what the hell is this I'm ser like also what what is going on here we're wedged up against the wall we're just just tanking it back in the field I don't dare go to the inside because I just know that people are just going to cut me off when we're going to turn oh god and then everyone just oh god the problem is, it's like, Pocono's a really narrow groove, so, Bobby, what are you doing, mate? Bob, what are you doing, mate? So, like, I mean, on the outside is at least preferable because we just get squeezed into the wall. On the inside, we just get wrecked. Like, we just would not survive. Um, but the problem is, as we probably will see once again up here, there's the grip, there's the grip. Oh, we've actually stayed in the groove, and then we've just floated out of it. It was like, oh, there's the racing line. Bye, racing line. It was nice knowing you for those brief, wonderful seconds. So yeah, this is another one of those setups where it's wrecking tight from the- oh god. And then we just get out of the groove altogether and it's just nowhere. All we're doing right now is just plugging Double E Dud's new chat show. Oh, Brad, mate, oh, Brad, can you- Yeah, that accelerator pedal, you, that thing, put it down, press it down. You want to want to race here with a broken ankle. Was it a broken ankle or like a chip in his foot or something? I don't know. You want to you want to race here with one and a half legs. Or one and a half feet. I don't even know. They're nearly wrecking behind me. They're like five million wide behind. I'm just going to get out of here now. Oh, and we're back in another three wide scenario. I've got to say, to be fair, to its credit, Pocono is actually more fun. Like, I've barely ever driven Pocono in, in NASCAR games. It's just one of those, like, if I've not done a full season, I won't go and pick Pocono. Oh, we're in the middle of a three wide with a really tight car. Eric, oh God, Eric Jones, that was not a good idea. Ryan Newman decided to take advantage, not realizing I'm driving basically the four-wheeled stock car equivalent of the Titanic post-hitting an iceberg. This is literally how rubbish my... Oh, God. Now, Regan Smith's just stopping. He's actually doing me a favour, actually. Regan's actually running interference for us. Oh, can we squeeze it in the middle? Oh, we squeeze it in the middle. Oh. I love how Bob was just like, hold your line there. Yeah, I can't... Uh, yeah, I literally had no choice but to. I was squeezed between two cars. I was literally in a sandwich. And it was a sandwich full of pain and misery. And, oh, that's the apron. And then just, there's the racing line, by racing line, by groove, by grip, by hopes and dreams. <laughs> Do you know what's worse? Do you know what's, you know what's the worst thing about this race? Like, not even that this race, like I say, at least racing at Pocono is actually pretty fun. I, I, I've actually, like I did some, of the, some laps in single player to prepare for this race. And with a car that can actually handle and you can actually make adjustments to and shit, this is really, uh, Pocono is actually really fun to drive. The issues with the AI cutting you off at turn one, notwithstanding, that's a bit of an issue. I just wish they'd have some give. Or that, like, if you hit an AI car, it's, like, a 50-50 chance whether they'll actually give or just stay completely, like, rigid. <coughs> Which I don't blame too much on this game because that's something that a lot of racing games do. Like, the Gran Turismo AI are just, like, impossible. You ram into them at full speed and they're like, no, we're not moving. We're, we're just not moving. But, uh... Yeah, the AI is really good, and once again, like, the actual racing experience of Pocono is fun. It's just my car is so bad. My car is so bad. And as I say, like, I don't know if it's <coughs> just me. I, 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 like, I'm not a crap driver. I'm on a wheel, and I'm fairly smooth. I'm not, like, rubbish. Um, but, like, it just seems to me that, like, it's, it's almost like in career mode. It's like, yeah, your car's going to be rubbish, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can make as many setup adjustments as you want, 
but you won't be able to fix your car. You won't be able to make it actually drive any better, any more comfortable. Ryan Ellis, what are you doing in 23rd? Except for just screwing with all of us. I'm going for a gap. I'm going for glory. I'm going for clean air. I've made it. Wow. Oh, we're actually, hang on though. We're at 23rd. Could this be a bit like that race at New Hampshire I had in NASCAR 07? Anyone seen that video? <clears throat> like Joey Logano sticking with us like, lads, this random bozo from Team Budget Sports is actually pointing a way forward. He's actually found a path through to clear air. And we've got 10 laps to go. Yeah, there's, there's still some chance for us here. We might still salvage something half decent from the wreckage of this race. Despite a speeding penalty on pit road, despite multiple wrecks, despite David Hoots falling asleep again, and despite literally having perhaps the worst car of my entire career. But there is every chance that, like, if anyone remembers my NASCAR 07 race at New Hampshire <coughs> in the chase for the cup mode, I literally spent three quarters of that race being absolutely atrocious. Oh, God, no. Well, maybe not. At least at New Hampshire, we could work on the car and make it better, and I got better at the track. Here, the car is, if anything, just getting worse and worse. Like, how is it suddenly springing loose on me? Is it just me, like, overdriving it to be like, please stop being tight? Hello, Michael McDowell. We're actually being helped here by the fact there's quite a few mediocre cars half, like, up through the field. So we're like, oh, well, here's some cars we can actually pass. And there's presumably quite a few... Oh, God, but then... But then it just doesn't turn, and Michael McDowell's trying to cut back to the inside on us. And Matt Kent... No, that's Carl Bush has joined, joined in for the fun. He's just like, I'm just going to let these two blithering idiots wreck themselves. One of them's that bozo from Team Budget Sports, so surely he will. Oh, we're actually sticking... Yes, it's actually turned through the tunnel turn. It's only taken us 31 pissing laps, but it's made the turn. Oh God, this might be the dawn of a new era. This might be the moment that our race turns around. We could do this. It's never too late to... Oh, fuck off, Carl Bush. Thanks. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that, you knobhead. Anyway, I need a sip of tea. Mm. <clears throat> and this time it's at the perfect temperature, so no burnt tongue for me. And, uh, well, we got six laps left on fuel. And we have about, what, nine laps left of the race. I mean, at this point, <laughs> if our best, if the best we're going to finish is probably, well, I can see Chase Elliott behind us, so we're probably going to finish, like, 25th or something. Like, should we try for the fuel gamble? Like, I'm not being funny. We've got no right front tyre left. Once again, the right front is just shredded. We, like, I don't know how we're going to make it to the end. We've got five laps of fuel left. And we have, what, eight and a half laps to go. Oh, God, now Chase Elliott's just rounding us up. <clears throat> so we may as well, I don't know, shall we? We may as well just, like, try. Like, at least just run as long as possible. God, this car is just not turning at all. It's pathetic. Um... Like, and that's a that's a, another problem with these setups that are just so atrocious and they're really tight off the corner. You burn up the right front tire so quickly. But, uh, well, we got, what, eight laps to go? Seven? Eight? And five and a half laps to do on fuel. Or five and a half laps worth of fuel. So we painfully can't make it, but... I mean, if a caution comes out at the right time, it could eat up enough laps, or maybe we just do a splash? I don't know. Like... At this point, it's the only thing that's going to get us a decent result. You know, like, what? Oh, hello, Chase Elliott's coming back to us. Chase Elliott's decided to suddenly run out of talent. <clears throat> and that's quite hard for him to do, because he is very talented. Um, yeah, well, let's just see what happens in these final eight laps. Like, we're in 24th. We've got a rubbish car. But hey, you know what? At Fontana, we still managed to salvage a top 20 finish with a horrendous car and on a track that shouldn't have suited us. So let's try it, man. Four laps to go on fuel, apparently. I'm just going to draft Chase Elliott down the front straight. I think someone has already pitted. So let's try and draft him down the front straight. See if we can save some fuel on the back of Chase Elliott and not do a Jamie Wink up and go, Ugh, my race engineers told me to stay behind this guy to draft him and save some fuel. Fuck that. Let's die bomb him. Oops, I've just knocked him off. Wait a minute. Let's block the guy behind me while I try and put him back. Oh, everyone's crashed behind me. Welp, nothing to do with me. I'm just going to go out of here. Wait, what do you mean? 15 second penalty. Um, anyway. <laughs> I got carried away there. Oh, oh God. It's just mid... <laughs> turn two is like reality turn. It's just like, let's just bring you back down to earth there, boy. Let's just do that. Right, we're coming around for lap 35 now. Uh, so we'll have six laps to go. 
and about three, four laps worth of fuel, three laps worth of fuel. <laughs> We're not going to make it on fuel, lads. We're not going to make it, but we may as well just go as far as we can and then put a splash of fuel in. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. Just stay out. We have no... Oh, we're actually... And people are pitting now. So people are pitting. People are pitting. So, let's just be patient here. Let's sip our tea. Let's see how this unfolds, shall we? We have 55%. Oh, God. The right front is literally on the cords right now. I'm surprised there's not just a shower of sparks off the right front right now. Still, six laps to go. In what's been a... Well... Average race. It's been eventful, but average race for us. A bit rubbish. But there is still a chance we can salvage a good finish out of this one. Hope is, as always, a thing with feathers. And we must remember that. Even in times of great darkness and despair, as most of this race has been. Oh, and two guys in front of us are pinning. How about everyone else? We've still got two laps of fuel left, apparently. And... Yep, yeah, now oh, we've got two laps of fuel and five laps still to run. And at one of the longest tracks on the schedule, with uh, we're going to struggle to stretch it out, lads. Well, Carl Edwards is still leading. He stayed out, so maybe he's going for the same run as us. And actually, if I remember rightly, we actually restarted quite close together, didn't we? He's been kind of mired back in the mid-pack with us, so... Oh, cr oh, Christ on a bicycle. Oh, that's Kurt Busch, who's just pitted. We're already getting passed by guys who have pitted as well. Yeah, the strategy's not going to work, lads, is it? Oh, I'm just going to try and defend. Just got to try and hang on for as long as possible. Like, literally, he's already pitted. He's good on fuel and tyres, and we still... He's still about to pass us. No. No, Kurt. I'm hanging on for this. I'm hanging on. Uh, oh, he's nearly wrecked us. He's nearly... Re well, he has wrecked us, pretty much. Kurt, can you... What are you doing? Kurt, you... <laughs> ah, he's wrecked himself. <laughs> and there's the caution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. He tried to wreck us out of the lead. Right, well, hang on. We're in the lead of the race. Um, we have about fumes in the tank, basically. Um, only us and Kurt are pitting because he wrecked. I'm not pitting. <laughs> I'm not going to pit. I'm not going to pit. This is going to be an absolute train wreck, but I'm not going to pit. Do you remember Landon Castle a few years ago at Fontana? That's the strategy we're going for, bitches. Team, Bud <laughs> Team Budget Sports is going to lead them down to the restart. Oh, it's the two Johnsons on the front row. It's Jimmy and an absolute Johnson on the front. Oh, God. We have, li <laughs> we have literally no fuel. But what a restart. Oh my <laughs> what a restart. Now, how many laps have we got to do? Are we in overtime? Are there three laps to go or two? If there's two... Oh, we could do this. There is every chance. There oh, uh, no, no. Silly me. Oh, no, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. It is turning out like Landon Castle at Fontana. We are still fifth, and apparently we have no fuel. We are out of fuel. We are going to literally be splottering any minute now. Guys behind me. Oh, this is going to be the biggest train wreck. Oh, God. It's already the biggest train wreck. I've wrecked on my own. Oh, cr oh fucks. Oh, oh, God. We've just caused a big... Oh, Christ. My car is so bad. What do you think I'm going to do? What What do you really think I'm going to do? Yeah, now I'm going to pit. But, <laughs> Ryan, what are you doing, mate? Three-point turn. And oh, we're down 38th. We're down pissing 38th. So much for that gamble. I mean, I'm not sure what I was expecting. I mean, the, car's tra the car is absolute shite on new tires, let alone old. Oh, God, this is not going to work, is it? I don't care anymore. I don't care. I'm going to go... I'm just going to dive bomb everyone. This is going to be the worst idea in the world. We're 36. Oh, God. And we're not even going to get there, are we? We're just so slow. We are so slow. Oh, God. Oh, and now everyone's stopped. Now Casey Mears is nearly cr oh, crying out loud. This is the thing. It's almost like Daytona all over again. If you're in the back of the... Oh, cry. Now Greg Biffle's wrecked... Thanks. Now pissing Greg Biffle's wrecked us from 37th. And, um... And, uh... Uh, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to, uh, throw the caution, Dave? David, not going to, I'm just going to park here. There is another wreck, apparently, further up the track. I'm now driving backwards. And you're going to throw any sort of caution at all? 
This is kind of making a mockery of the patch saying it had fixed caution detection. Because it patently hasn't. That's now two for this race. Uh. Uh. Um. Fine, I guess I'll finish the bloody race. Uh, uh, I don't even care anymore. I don't even know. I'm just. Just. Uh. And there's apparently another wreck. Is that going to be a caution? Or was that for me? Actually, no, that was for me. That was actually for me. So, yeah. Yeah, this race. Yeah. This race was a really fun, really good, really valuable, really, uh, really good uh, waste of my time. It was really good at wasting my time, in fact. Do we go in the pits or just chill on the front straight for a bit? Let's just chill on the front straight for a bit. Oh, we're taking the white flag. They're going to be finishing in a minute, aren't they? They are literally going to be finishing. Um, so, Dave, you really should have thrown the caution, mate, because this could happen. Get wrecked, M9. <laughs> just wrecked the winning car as he came across the line. Jimmy Johnson just won this race. In the oh, and it's just death and carnage. Oh, it's just devastation. He's gone rogue. He's gone absolutely rogue. Oh, my. Oh, it's just carnage. There's cars in the catch fence. There's just flames and death. It's just absolute bedlam here at Pocono. And he still wants me to finish the race. They still want me to finish the race. <laughs> they still want me. Why? The race is over. Like, this is a minor thing. Can I not just select a DNF? Or simulate the rest of the race? Why have I got to finish even when I'm like, laps down? We saw this at Charlotte, I was six laps down. Why could I not just, just, just not finish? Anyway, we're gonna limp round. With, um, a car that now resembles a Fiat Multipler. It's about as long and about as powerful right now. And, here's a point though. All that punishment, no engine failure. We've twice had engine failures. Get wrecked, Dale and Hunt Jr. Oh, it's just, just, uh, no give. That's the worst bump draft he's ever had. Oh, God. <laughs> just wrecked him on the cooldown lap. It's absolute anarchy. The stewards have no, the race officials, race control has no idea what to do. He's just gone completely off script. This is my pipe bomb, bitches. Oh, he's just gone. Yeah, David Hoots, you want to not give me cautions now? This is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to wreck half the field on the cooldown lap. Get wrecked. Oh, you can get wrecked as well. Oh, okay. You can just not get wrecked. Oh, Chris Busher. Slay. Gets... Oh, <laughs> he ducked out the way. The rest of the field still... Why is... Why are some of the fields still going... Are you guys like... Am I going to get 37th on the line here? Because these lot are just doing naught miles and... No, I'm not. Oh, well. <laughs> the, the graph for that race was kind of like... You know those like graphs you've seen about Brexit, about the, how the pound's been doing? It's like, eh, 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 eh. and then it's sort of, uh, oh, oops, oh dear, uh, oh no, it's going up, it's going up, and then oh, just plunged to the floor, through the bottom of the floor, and out into Australia. So uh, yeah, I told you that the state of my race, mate, <laughs> the state of my car, deary me. So um, yeah, that was Pocono for you. Absolute crapshoot that was, and we've got Michigan next. Ah, the track I've been told is the worst on the entire schedule. That's gonna be fun. Can I, like, skip an episode? Please? Can I just do something else? Can I play more Forza? And then, can we just skip straight to Sonoma? I've heard that's a good race. I've heard that's a good track. I might actually do well there. Anyway. Oh, dear. Well, we are through Pocono. We're in a bit of a tough stretch at the moment. We got screwed over at Charlotte, and now, Pocono, we just lurched from one crisis to another. Crisis? I give you a bloody crisis. Um, and there's quite a few there. Um, so, I mean, I mean, we could try something at Michigan, but I mean, we're still seventh in the chase points, though. So, hey, what am I getting annoyed about? I'm in the chase. la di da I'm in the chase. and probably going to fall out with an engine failure because that's what it happens in the chase. But never mind. Please subscribe to me if you haven't already. <laughs> Smash the like button. I don't know what I'm saying now. I'm going to go finish this tea. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>